Let me start by asking a question. Do you know what is the total online US sales today? What does it attribute to? Any guesses in the audience? Total online US sales. Okay. No guess? It's about 20%. 20%. And the total online sales is only going to grow up to about 30% by the year 2030. You heard from John a lot about how retail and call centers and how his team is making a difference for customers coming into those stores uh, or those calling those call, channel, call center channels. You know, despite all the digital hype, customers still love going to the stores. They still love still call the call centers for complex products. In my household, I'll take an example of me. I do most of my shopping online, right? If I'm trying to buy my groceries, I'm on Sam's Club app or a Costco app trying to buy groceries. My wife, on the other hand, she loves going to the Costco. She loves going to every aisle. She has to stop in every aisle. I, I kid you not. We spend probably two hours just sitting in Costco, going through every product. And we make a grocery list. By the end of it, we look at our grocery list, and I come, ho come back home, and I say, honey, this is the list that you wanted to buy, and this is what we bought. Look at this cart, right? People still love those experiences, right? I'm here today to talk about unified commerce and how businesses have to transform themselves in order to meet the customer demands in every channel. My name is Pawan Tamana, and I work for Consumer Technology Experience Organization. Both John and I, we work for the same org, and our mission statement is we deliver simplified and differentiated customer experiences advancing our technology. That's a mouthful, right? What it really means is we wanted to make shopping experiences and customers who want to do business with AT&T, simple, right? Just think about Costco. You go to Costco, who likes to wait in a line for the cashier to ring your, your cart full of items while your kid is crying on one side? Nobody does, right? I'm a more, more of a self-checkout guy. Um, John talked a lot about call center experiences, right? Um, do, you have, do, you, do you ever have that experience where you call you, you get on a call, you're trying to get help, right away, you press one, starts with frustration that you're calling a call center. Second, you hear a hold music. Beep, 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 or you might hear some nice music. Finally, you get, you get frustrated, you say, agent, 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 get to care, Z or you press zero, 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 right? But for some, for some products and for some businesses, it's really important for them to operate in all, in all the channels, right? I'm gonna talk about how businesses have to set up themselves to get, be successful. But before we go there, a little bit of background about myself. Um, I've graduated from India, came to US to do my master's in computer science, went to University of Alabama. Any, crims any Crimson Tide folks here? Roll Tide, no? Man, all right. Uh, <laughs> Well, I got a couple of them, so that's good. I uh, started my career working as a software engineer. Used to write a lot of Java code. Um, then I moved on to becoming a senior engineer, lead. I played an architect uh, for a couple of years. Um, and then I moved to uh, Best Buy. I took a leadership role in Best Buy. Um, really was part of their digital transformation journey um, through the years. And then finally I joined AT&T well, six years ago. Um, when I started, it started with just transforming digital, AT&T.com, and the mobile app that AT&T had. Um, and in the last few years, uh, you, you heard from John a little bit about it. We've been transforming customer experience to make sure all of our channels, whether it is store, whether it's our online, or our app, or our call centers, our chat, VA channels, all of them are connected, right? 
to provide a seamless customer experiences. Okay. I'll talk. Uh, I'll talk today a little bit about how how did we go about doing that. And we're not. We're we're by no means perfect. We started this journey about three years ago, and I'll walk you through how we are making that happen. Before we go there, just a deep dive into the history. How did e-commerce start? Right. Back in the 80s, e-commerce was simple. You walk into a store, it was just stores, you get what you want, you pay, you get out, right? Other than people like my wife, she loves to go every aisle, right? Keeping that aside. Then came 90s, right? With web and internet being very prevalent, people started shopping online, You've, you've, you've got companies like Amazon and eBay who started their digital stores. And primarily, some companies only operated digitally, right? And all businesses started evolving, uh, building a website of their own, um, modifying wor what they had for years and years, their brick and mortar stores, into and building a retail front so people can come in and order online. Then you move into you know, 2000s where Everybody started, since we had online, you had to have call center to support for issues that people faced online. Then came the mobile revolution in 2010s, right? iPhone came, businesses started quickly evolving themselves and building an app. There's an app for this, there's an app for that, right? But what you saw over the years was businesses still haven't evolved to connect the journeys across all these channels. I'll tell you a quick story. This was Thanksgiving. I bought a new pair of sneakers. I looked at it online. I, go, I got it home. I looked at the color. When I got it home, the color was not to my, my, my liking. So we were all, as a family, going to the shopping mall next, you know, a couple days after. I said, okay, I'm not going to return, return my shoes. I'm going to go to the store. I went to the store and I said, hey, I would like to return these and get a different pair. I was said, sorry, sir, we can't take your shoes. You would have to return it back via online. As a customer, I'm sure some of you probably face these experiences for different products. You know, that's, that's a frustrating experience as a customer. And that's our approach to solving commerce and what I would call unified commerce, right? Um, before I go deep into the unified commerce, customer experience are still evolving even more and more. What you see nowadays is social commerce, where businesses are expanding in Facebook, Twitter, or X, now called X, um, and many other avenues. And you all have live commerce. If you all heard about live commerce, there is more even immersive experiences on TikTok. You're watching a video uh, or shots on TikTok, or you're watching uh, Instagram shots. Right then and there, on the bottom of the screen, while you're watching those short videos, you'd see a buy button, right? That's the level of engagement and immersive brand experience that customers are seeking and companies are going to. So how do, we, how do we go and solve this problem and also build in a way uh, it's cost effective and resonates with the customers, right? That's a big eye chart. That's what we refer to AT&T as an eye chart. Um, well, when you, when you come and work for big companies, uh, you will see a lot of slides like this with lots of words, lots of text, so don't get scared. Um, but what I want you to focus on is this middle layer, what we call omni-channel platform services, right? So you have all these top channels where customers are going and shopping or calling for support. Um, John talked a lot about CRM and how we are driving innovation in CRM and using AI to drive innovation. All of this, like what he called out, starts with data, right? You have to start with core data. And our approach to solving this is unifying all the technology stacks that support all channels into a common data sources, which you'll hear. 
So we start with common data source. So we look at all of our customer data, we pull all of that into common data source. We got off all, of, all of our orders into a common data source. We got all, all customers' cards, whether you buy, you, whether you add, add, your, add, add that product online or you added that on phone, we got, we got your card, so it's all synced up, right? Um, and it's real time, because you don't want to have an experience where you went to online, you, did, you, you configured your, uh, your size and a product, and then you come open up your phone to order, order all of a sudden you don't see it. Right? That's a frustrating experience for customers. Okay? So we start with data. So we have common data sources for each and every domain. Then we expose APIs on top of the data. So all of this is built using microservices, RESTful APIs, and we infuse AI into the data to drive more instance, more insights, and more recommendation and personalizations for the customer. Okay? That's how we make it happen. Uh, you know, some of the benefits of unified commerce, uh, you know, I, I've talked a lot about the problems. Um, what you see is you could make a seamless customer experience without having data loss across channels, which is very critical for customers as, as they are moving from a channel to channel. We have to have real-time data feeds, so we compute. John talked about we compute petabytes of data, so we have to unify them. We have to aggregate a lot of data near real-time. Um, and think about at and it serves uh, 150 million customers. That's about 40% of US population, right? So 40% of US population uses at least, at least one product of at and or more than 40%, at least one product. Um, and then we have to, you have to unify all the orders and all the backend integration behind, because you might have placed an order and you might want to a chat to say, hey, what about I want to change the color of the phone? You don't want to be stuck saying, Order is not found, right? And lastly, customer engagement. What we truly believe is we believe in driving customer engagement and loyalty rather than pricing and promotion strategies and discount strategies, because they're short-lived. Last but not least, the benefit is the technology, which is we can react to um, a change much faster. Uh, if you want to launch a new product or capability into the market, because we have a unified commerce stack, that can be launched faster to all channels, not just one channel. All right. Because this is a technology talk, you got to have the word cloud, right? A, a technology talk and a word cloud, that's what, uh, that's what completes the technology talk. So these are all the technologies we use. Um, we build all of our APIs in RESTful. We've used a lot of Mongo, Cassandra, a lot of NoSQL data stores. Java, there's a lot of eventing going on, so there's Kafka, Azure Event Hub. All of our technology is, built, is deployed, built and deployed in, in, our, in our cloud. Uh, we use both AWS and Azure, so a um, lot of cool technologies for, for folks who, are, uh, who, are, who really want to get your hands on some of the cool technologies. All right, I want to leave with um, my closing thoughts with a few things. One. Um, John talked a little bit about this. The future of commerce is not just about selling. He talked about relationship selling. It's about building connection to the customer with the brand and being able to be where the customer is. Show up in a place where the customer really wants and use your products and services. Um, way how we are doing this, we are using cutting edge technologies like 5G, 5G networking, edge computing, Cloud, cloud infrastructure, we are using those technologies to build hyper-personalization and more relevant customer experiences, okay? For all of you as students and professionals, I think uh, it's really exciting time to be and be working in AT&T. Um, whether you want to solve a complex problem, uh, you want to learn some cool tech, or maybe break something along the way, but you still learn while, while you're breaking and fixing them, we'd love to have you in AT&T and be part of this unified commerce journey. Thank you.